And more on our top story now, the over $12 billion in fixed asset investments that Singapore attracted last year. We have with us in the studio Cindy Ko. She's executive vice president at EDB and Dr. Tan Dunlin, director of research and technology at Thales. That's a leading technology and defense company. Welcome to both of you. It's good to see you. Thank you. Uh, First off, uh, Ms. Cole, let's start with you. That figure of $12.7 billion that we've seen for uh, 2023 in fixed asset investments, it, it seems like a lot of money. Is it a lot compared to what we've seen before? And, and when we look at the year ahead, can we continue to maintain this or even do better? Well, Don, uh, you have highlighted that uh, you know, $12.7 billion is, well, it's not a low figure, we have exceeded our medium to long-term investment commitment targets. And last year, when we announced that uh, we achieved about $22 billion, it was a bumper year, not to be repeated, right? Um, so, yes, we have exceeded our medium to long-term uh, targets. And uh, there are still uncertainties in the global economy, ongoing geopolitical tensions, increased competition for investments, and these are examples. So we remain cautiously optimistic in our outlook for 2024. Now, we, are able to, we have been able to exceed our medium to long-term targets. It's a strong testament to Singapore's position as a, as a trusted hub for business, innovation and talent. And we really need to take advantage of our attributes, double down, and really to, to reap all these benefits of these attributes, right? Um, we are starting to see positive signs of good investment projects coming to Singapore. So just last week, I was at a groundbreaking ceremony of ATV. So ATV is a U.S. biopharmaceutical company. They have invested uh, $300 million in expanding their manufacturing facility that will be manufacturing biologics drug substance that will serve the global market. And when it's fully ramped up, uh, it will create 500 uh, new jobs. Now, aerospace, well, we have seen the increase in global air travel. Right? And today, we have about 130 aerospace companies here. And we expect uh, the aerospace manufacturing as well as the MRO, maintenance, repair, overhaul industry to do well. And Singapore Air Show will happen soon after Chinese New Year. Sorry to cut in here, Ms. Ko. Uh, you're talking about essentially our making the best of the strengths that we have. Exactly. All right, so we put in investment, it creates jobs. Uh, how much more potential does Singapore have in this particular? Put in money, make jobs out of it. What Very is quickly. interesting is that um, not all the projects that we have anchored here in Singapore uh, actually have uh, been given incentives. There have been projects that uh, have taken root here um, with no incentives. right? And uh, I go back to again, why companies choose to invest in Singapore is because of the trusted hub location for business, access to talent, access to uh, R&D as well as innovation capabilities in Singapore. Dr. Tan, let's bring you in on the conversation now. Uh, you lead the research and tech division at Thales. A great deal of investment go goes into that research and has done for a long time. Uh, the centre is, we understand it, about 20 years old and it's one of five very, very key research centres. Talk to us about the relevance of the work that it does, why it's so important to invest so much into, into divisions like this. Yeah, thanks for your question. So in Talos, uh, we are a technology leader at heart, a technology and engineering company at heart. So we, we believe in investing uh, in our future, and that is through TRT, Talos Research and Technology in Singapore. So what we do is uh, really looking at uh, upstream uh, research activities, looking at uh, new techs, uh, new technologies that uh, people have not actually thought about it is not something that we can put right into the market today but we we see it as an important thing to understand a bit more so that we together with our partners as well as our customers can then really uh, co-experiment and then really uh, look into how uh, we can um, um, uh, understand it better before putting it into our solutions because our, our solutions uh, last, largely uh, is uh, looking 
uh, is in applications of aerospace and uh, defense and security. So we cannot. Uh, th these are critical uh, infrastructure and systems that we provide to our customers in Singapore and the region. Uh, so when we put them our tech in the product, they are very well validated. So that when uh, you use a Talus product, you know it is a trustable uh, and validated. Yeah. These are high-end products. As Don was saying, uh, the center itself has yeah. been here more than 20 years. Yes. And Ms. Ko was saying, uh, sometimes the firms come here and take root despite having no incentives to do so. But for mm -hmm. Thales, what incentives have you seen over the years that has made Singapore an attractive place for an MNC like Thales? Um, one for sure, uh, as uh, Cindy has uh, mentioned, that this uh, Singapore has a very rich uh, talent uh, pool. Uh, the research and ecosystem is uh, great, which is also why we have set up uh, joint labs uh, with uh, NTU and CNRS uh, uh, in Singapore. So it become a base for us to understand how some of these uh, tech is applicable both uh, to Singapore as well as to our businesses um, everywhere. So Ms. Go, we really do need to nurture a lot more leadership talent, just like uh, Dr. Tan. Uh, how are we going to go about doing that? Uh, well, the Dr. Tan, I think uh, she may she, she was actually sponsored by EDB under one of our right. uh, programs. Um, it's an industrial postgraduate program. So when, uh, she's been working in Thales for a while. And that actually helped uh, Thales actually groom local Singaporeans to take up leadership in their R&D. Um, we have a partnership with uh, HCLI, which is Human Capital Leader Leadership Institute. Um, HCLI offers uh, leadership development courses. And most recently, is uh, we launched in partnership with HCLI the SGLN, which is Singapore Leaders Network, that was launched in July 2022. And uh, in, in the last 18 months, I was told that this network has about 1,000 members now. Mm. So these members uh, are Singaporeans, your next-to-be leaders, and as well as senior leaders, some of them have, uh, they actually hold global or regional C-suite positions. So this network creates opportunities for these local Singaporeans, the younger ones, to network and be mentored by the more senior, more established Singaporean leaders. Well, thank you, ladies, for coming into the studios and, and sharing your insights with us this evening. Really appreciate them. Uh, we've been speaking there to Cindy Co, Singapore's uh, Economic Development Board from the EDB, and also Dr. Tan Dan Lin from Thales.